Hey folks, I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar and this video is about my 1890s farmhouse. It took me about two years to remodel this farmhouse and it almost killed me. But I can happily say that I'm able to heat this house 100% uh, off solar energy if the sun's shining. If the sun's not shining, obviously I gotta use grid or battery power. And I can also heat it with wood. So I have three mini split uh, air conditioning units or heat pumps. This is the outdoor part. Um, these ones are a little bit special. These, uh, they run off uh, AC or DC. So that's my DC switch and my DC conductors going through that piece of liquid tight. They're plugged in right there. And, um, and then it also will run off AC power. And I've got AC power coming from my solar battery backup system. So I have three of these. This one is in the middle of the house. It's an 18,000 BTU unit. Then I also have another 18,000 BTU unit just like this and a 12,000 BTU that does a bedroom. These are the switches for the, uh, the mini splits. And then these are also the switches for the solar feeding my battery backup system. It did get a little busy trenching all the way out to the solar array, which is way out there. I'll show it to you now. Okay, so this is my solar array. It's 52 LG 400 watt modules and I have it wired uh, a little different. Uh, at the time, the power company that I'm on, they only allow you to sell back about 10 kW. So with a Solark 12K, with 12K of solar on it, a Solark 12K sells back 37 and a half amps. So what I have is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six panels going. Well, I think I have it wired like this actually. Six panels going to one mini split, six panels going to the other mini split, six panels going to the other mini split and the rest of the solar is going to my battery backup system but not all systems uh mini splits not all mini splits are going to work directly off dc or ac right the, the mitsubishis the dakins um mr cool those mini splits run directly off ac power and that's just fine i wanted to do the dc driven mini splits and have some dc appliances because uh i'm a solar guy also wanted to have the DC driven uh, appliances because my utility company only pays avoided costs. What that means is I can push, I can buy sol power all day from the power company and I'm paying 11 or 12 cents, but when I push one back up into them, they only give me four cents. So it makes a little more sense for me to consume all my power on the property. And I think we'll see uh, the whole country move towards, uh, not a, it's not true net metering, it's like basically called avoided cost where they're just paying you for the value of the electricity. They're not paying you the retail rate. So keep that in mind. That's another reason that I did the mini split, the solar mini splits is I wanted to use my power at the house. Um, it was about 29 degrees this morning. It was, uh, there was ice, ice on the ground, you know, totally frosted. And, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, my house will easily cruise through that kind of temperature if I, if it gets down to, uh, I'd say, down in the low 20s, I I definitely need to uh, kick on the wood stove just to get a little more, a little more heat there. Got to do this part just to show you guys because why why have solar mini splits if you can't do this right? I'm pulling the AC power. Ooh, that one came off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull, and I'm doing this in real time for you because um, I don't want you to say, well, that was just trick photography. He didn't really do it. I'm going to go around here to my other mini split. And we got all kinds of building projects going on here. Sorry, folks. I'm working on my deck here. Here's the other one. Go ahead and pull this. Still running. She's still just a purring along. If you can see that. All right, let me run along to this. That's the quickest way to get to my other one. Whew. Now, this one's still running. I didn't show you that, but it's still running. Let me run over here, turn this other one off. And this works awesome in the, in the summertime, being able to cool with uh, just off solar. I mean, it's, 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 you really can't interact with solar energy. So people get so excited about their solar and then it gets installed. I'm gonna pull this one now, just so you guys see. Her. She's running. It's spinning so much faster than that too. I don't know why it's 
can't see that. But uh, go ahead and pull that one. Having solar air conditioning, it, in a lot of ways, it feels like it's the holy grail. Now, after doing these, these um, the, 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 the brand of mini split that I did, uh, the support is pretty good, but I'm kind of like, oh man, what am I going to do in, you know, three or five years when stuff starts breaking? Will I still be able to get parts for these things? But so far, I've been able to get parts. I had something happen one time. All right, so here's the moment of truth, right? And I'm just going to flip you. Dang it, I can't flip this thing to, well, we'll just have to do it this way. All right, so here's unit number one. I don't know if you can see that. Probably looks. Unit one, still cranking away. We'll go look at unit two. Unit number two. I knew this was gonna be backwards, dang it. Whatever, you guys can read backwards, can't you? 100 degrees coming out of there. No power going to it. No stopping the film, so you know I'm not editing it. And then unit number three, still cranking away. If you can see the coil. Let me see if I can get the coil temp there. This one says it's only 96. It's not quite as hot. But you get the picture. Having, having, having the ability to run off of pure solar energy during the day and heat and cool my house off pure solar. I just wanted to be able to do it, man. When I look up there and I see this little, this little guy all green, I don't know if you can see that. I'll take you in here and show you on this other one. But when I see all green on there, I know I'm running off solar. I just love it. So I, I, if, if these became a lot more, there's one all green, you can see it. If these were, see it right there. If these, if I knew I could get parts for these, and that I was always going to be able to service them, I would absolutely just do these all the time. So, so a couple more things about the mini split. Uh, if you're wanting to add redundancy to your heating and cooling, it's a heat pump, so it heats and cools. And if you have a spot in your house where you know you just it's not quite the heating system you have doesn't quite do it for you, or you maybe have an addition you're considering or a barn, this is definitely what you want, especially if it's a big open space. The mini split is the way to go. Um, if you want redundancy, you just want to have a backup, you know, in your master bedroom or you have a big house, but you guys only stay in one room most of the time, mini split. Uh, oh, and if you just want to get into solar, but you don't want to fill out an interconnection agreement, you could do one of these. You don't have to have an inspection. Uh, you don't have to have uh, inverters or interconnection agreements. You don't have to get a bi-directional metering agreement with your power company. This thing, does, this thing just uses the solar power connected to it. So if you're looking to do a DIY solar project and you're an HVAC guy or you know an HVAC guy, all, all you gotta do is get him to come down and you know, uh, put a vacuum on the lines. Or if you buy a Mr. Cool, which is not a solar driven mini split, right? This is, takes DC and AC power. So it takes grid or inverter power, but it also takes DC power. But if you buy like a Mr. Cool or a Fujitsu or a Daikin or a uh, Mitsubishi, you're still going to get all the efficiency and all, everything out of the, the mini split. You just don't have the solar, but a Mr. Cool comes with pre, it comes pre charged with the refrigerant. So you, you could theoretically not even involve an HVAC guy. But th these are a great DIY project. I mean, you bring the solar to it, uh, you bring the grid power to it. And this is this is not super difficult. And you just get a guy to come suck down the line sets. Main thing about HVAC guys is don't call them and ask them for help. Uh, when they're super busy. So when the seasons are changing or it's really, really hot or really, really cold, that's not the time to do one of these projects. You call them during the shoulder season. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you is my wood pile here. So uh, once I put these mini splits in, man, I use so much less wood. I'm heating a 3,000 square foot plus, it's a little over 3,000 square foot, 1890s farmhouse. And on a day like today when it's sunny, even though it's you know below freezing in the morning and we would need heat all day long, we would we'll run heat in this house. We don't burn any wood during the day. We burn a fire at night and then most of the time I'll stoke it up before I go to bed and then just let it go out because I know when the sun comes up, this baby's running off solar energy. 
Also, if you're planning on being off grid or your goal is to be off grid, you're not gonna be able to start a conventional heat pump with a solar power system. This thing draws 88 amps at 240 volts. Just to start, that's the locked rotor amps. That's what you wanna look at. Locked rotor amps, running load amps. The compressor pulls a ton of power on these big units. Also, when they start up, they're loud, and when they run, they're loud. Listen to that thing. Starts up, doesn't make a noise, doesn't grunt, doesn't go eh, and then when it's running, doesn't make much noise. It says locked rotor amps on this thing is 30 amps. I've clamped it, and it's definitely not 30 amps. Running amps, 4.2. This thing's on a 30 amp breaker. It, it pulls like 12 amps and soft starts when I see it run. But maybe that's because the solar is connected to it. I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, if you want to be off grid or you don't want to listen to your heat pump, because uh, if it's under your porch or something, it can really, really be a lot of noise pollution, then these are definitely the way to go. They're not the end all, but they really, really help. And overall, I'm happy with them. And I almost forgot to talk about the financial aspect of it. Um, I could have spent, it's gonna be like 10 grand to fix my dinosaur heat pump or, or put in a new one. Um, with the three mini splits, I was able to spend, I think I spent like about $7,000, but I was able to get the 30% federal tax credit because it was a solar project. So there's another big one. You get 30% federal tax credit for doing it with solar. Uh, and you get nothing if you do a regular heat pump. Now, all that's going to change coming down the line. They're going to be given big incentives for doing heat pumps and changing over to heat pumps with the Inflation Reduction Act to fix inflation. But, uh, uh, you know, all in all, I'm really happy with the mini splits. I probably will get a heat pump system, too, at some point just because I want all the toys. But I'll probably get a wood boiler at some point. Man, I want it all. As always, I'm Johnny Valentine. I'm a licensed electrician and the owner of Gain Solar Services. I do installs, but I also do consulting and material sales all over the United States. Can't do your install if we're in Georgia and you're in California, but we can help you. So if you're interested in lithium batteries, Solarks, ground mounts, this is all stuff that I sell and I'd be happy to provide it to you and then do free consulting if you buy from me. I, I talk all my customers through their installs and help them get everything set up. So please contact me through this channel. My information's at the beginning of the end of the channel and I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Thanks for watching.